Hey kids, Mrs. Butcher here, and today you're going to write polynomial functions. So here's your first example. I want you to write the cubic function shown. We've done this before. Um, this is just a review. But you look at the graph and you say, all right, I got three zeros that I can pull out for sure. Negative 4 and negative 2 and positive 1. That's three zeros. It's a cubic, so I'm not missing any. There's no repeats. There's no um, imaginaries. I know that this is going to be y equals something times x plus 4 and x plus 2 and x minus 1. Out of room, darn it. But the thing is, you can't forget that something. You can't forget about A. There could be a number in front of there. So we've got to figure out what that is. And so the way you want to do that is to choose another point on the graph. And we always want to use, or you don't have to, but the best one to use is the y-intercept. And of course, I picked an ugly graph for you. So I'm going to give you the y-intercept. Normally, if I'm going to give you a graph, I'd make it something that was obvious. But this one, your point is at 0 and negative 8 thirds. So that's our y-intercept. We're going to use that. We're going to plug it in for x and y. So we're going to go negative 8 thirds equals a, 0 plus 4, because see I'm putting a 0 in for x, 0 plus 2, and 0 minus 1, which means negative 8 thirds equals a times 4 times 2 times negative 1, which would be negative 8a. So if I divide negative 8 thirds by negative 8, I'm going to get a positive 1 third. So now I can go back and I can write my cubic function. Um, I'll just do it here. y equals, now I know a is one third, and then x plus 4, x plus 2, and x minus 1. Now if it just says write the function, you're done. If it says put it in standard form, then lucky you, you get to multiply it all out. But the main thing is finding what the a value is. Not forgetting that there is an a value in the first place, because I can see people just writing this and being done but that's not going to take it all the way down to this point here. It's going to take it to somewhere else. Okay, so now that you know how to write a polynomial function given its zeros, and you also know that the zeros aren't always real, and they aren't always rational, um, we have some things we can use to help us write our polynomial functions with those weird zeros. We've talked before about conjugates. A conjugate would be something like 1 plus the square root of 2 and 1 minus the square root of 2. That would be a conjugate pair. Um, we used that when we were rationalizing some denominators. We also talked about complex conjugates. 1 plus 2i and 1 minus 2i would be an example of a complex conjugate pair. And those are the kinds of things you would get if you were getting a um, uh, an irrational, sorry, irrational or a non-real zero, right? If you were doing the quadratic formula, you'd get plus or minus, and then um, the square root, right? So, anytime you have a zero that looks like one of these, you automatically know that you're going to have to have the conjugate, um, the conjugate that goes with it as a zero as well. So write that baby down. If you're given a plus the square root of b or a plus bi as a zero, you automatically know that a minus square root of b or a minus bi, the conjugate of that, will also be a zero. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to give you one, and then you have to automatically know that the other one is automatically included. So here's an example problem. Write a polynomial of least degree with a leading coefficient of one and 2 and 2 plus the square root of 3 is zeros. And I know this one's kind of confusing, but make sure when you're reading it you say, okay, they're telling me the leading coefficient is 1. So that means my a is 1. I don't have to worry about figuring out a different a. 
and then my zeros are 2 and 2 plus the square root of 3. But because I automatically know that 2 plus the square root of 3 has to come in a conjugate pair, then I know my zeros are actually going to be 2, 2 plus the square root of 3, and 2 minus the square root of 3. has to be that way. So if I give you, even though I'm just giving you 2, you have to say, well, the, that one has to come in pairs, so it, I have to have 3. I have to have the least degree of my polynomial is going to be the third degree. So now, you just do what we did in the first example. We know our leading coefficient is 1, so our a is 1, which is good. We don't have to worry about anything else. And our zeros are 2, so x minus 2. And 2 plus the square root of 3, so x minus 2 plus the square root of 3. And 2 minus the square root of 3, so x minus 2 minus the square root of 3. And a, a, a big source of confusion, people often will uh, switch the signs here. It's always x minus your 0, right? Your factor is always x minus the 0. The 0 is what changes. The 0, the 2 plus root 3 and the 2 minus root 3 is what changes. So it's always x minus the 0. So now, since I said in standard form, oh, I didn't, but I wanted in standard form, so let's multiply this out. Um, I'm going to do these two first. And what I want to do is go ahead and distribute my minus sign. So I have x minus 2 minus root 3 and x minus 2 plus root 3. And then I need to multiply these out. Now you have the option of just doing a triple foil for both of these. And that's fine. If, you, um, you know, if that's what you are most confident with, then do that. But there is a shortcut, and I'm going to show it to you. You can group these together to where I have an A minus B and an A plus B, where A is my X minus 2 and B is the square root of 3. And if you realize that um, factoring a difference of squares gives you A minus B and A plus B, your difference of squares would be A squared minus B squared. So my a is x minus 2, my b is the square root of 3. It might be a little bit easier for you to do it this way if you understand how this works, because then you can just FOIL x minus 2, x squared minus 4x plus 4, and then minus the square root of 3 squared, which is minus 3, gives us x squared minus 4x plus 1. And of course, I still have to multiply that by x minus 2, but at least I've shortened the process a little bit. So now we have x cubed minus 4x squared plus 1x minus 2x squared plus 8x minus 2 gives us a final polynomial of x cubed minus 4 and 2 is 6x squared and 1 and 8 is 9x minus 2. So there's your polynomial with your leading coefficient of 1 and um, zeros of 2 and 2 plus the square root of 3 because we automatically knew we had to include 2 minus the square root of 3 and then we multiplied that all together and came out with this polynomial. But wait! There's more! Just one more example. Write a polynomial of least degree with a leading coefficient of 1, so once again we don't have to worry about a, and 5 and i are zeros. So we will write y equals a is 1, 5 is a 0, x minus 5, i is a 0, x minus i, but wait a minute, if i is a 0, then the conjugate which is going to be negative i, has to be a 0 as well. So the factor would be x plus i. All right, so now we need to multiply this all out. We'll do these together. We get x squared, and then we have minus ix and plus ix go away. And minus i squared is minus negative 1, so plus 1. And then we can foil these guys together, and we get x cubed plus... Um, 
x minus 5x squared minus 5. If we put this in the right form, we're going to have x cubed minus 5x squared plus x minus 5. There's your polynomial of least degree. So we could add more zeros, but we're not because it says least degree with a leading coefficient of 1 and 5 and i are zeros. And that's it. So now you guys can turn this off and go to bed. Have a good night.